Hey there, fellows. So check this out, as you're all well aware, we do drifting, and experiments, of course, and we've got a ton of leftover tires lying around. What can we use them for? Well, I've done a bit of research, and it turns out that by means of pyrolysis or thermal treatment, we can turn these into fuel and into flammable gas. The gas, of course, what can we even use it for? Plus, you have to contain it somehow, which we are not equipped to do. But trying to convert these tires into fuel is something I think we should definitely try. In theory, we should get something similar to gasoline. Carbon and all of that noise. Anyway, let's grab a few tires, work a bit of magic, and see what comes out of it in the end. Let's do this. We extract crude oil from old tires. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So look here, we've made this here contraption, all of the welding is done, inside here we have a compact furnace, and in that we have a container made out of a used gas cylinder, which we will be loading with chopped bits of tire. All of that is going to be heated up, the vapors will travel through this pipe, into the separator for the heavier fraction, then it'll continue through here. That's a cooling sleeve. It'll be filled with water that's gonna cool the gases down, allowing condensation to form. Then it gets into the second separator, then it does one more lap, and the lightest fraction will find its way into here. It'll be accumulating in reservoir number three. As for this, that is a breather tube for the gases. The gas that won't condensate and that'll be coming out from here will apparently be combustible. <laughs> and so, we are gonna have to run that simple and tried setup. It's based on a 3-liter jar. It's sort of a water shutter. The idea being, well, as you might imagine, the gas might start burning inside the tubes, and we wouldn't want that to find its way inside the system. And so the whole thing is hermetically sealed to prevent something bad from happening. Things might go kablamo if some oxygen were also to find its way into the mix. So yeah, just as a precaution, we've made that buffer. The gas will be escaping and burning off. I mean, if it so happens that it starts to burn, we are obviously gonna funnel it right back into the combustion chamber. Because what's the point of letting it go to waste, right? Now let's take everything outside, chop a few tires into pieces, and make us some crude oil. Oil, gasoline, and everything in between. Right, let's take this outside and fire it up. Right, guys, we've loaded the bits of tire. And I don't know whether or not that's a lot, but the cylinder was able to fit four tires. You would have seen us cutting and rolling them. We were going for efficient use of space. Now I'm gonna put the lid on. It is very well sealed to prevent any gases from escaping. So we secure it and that's about it. Get some firewood, heat the furnace up, and see how much crude we get from four tires. Let's get to it.
Okay, so something seems to be happening. Here we've got a pressure gauge, just in case. The cooling is working beautifully. It's just some regular tap water. These feel fine. The pipes have not gotten hot. And this is already giving us something. Look. Though, I mean... Now, I'm gonna be honest, that is quite a weird fluid. And we've got plenty of gas emissions. That's the water valve. And this is just... That is a lot of gas flow. And the gas burns rather well. And now I suggest... We try and find out... How well that stuff... Whether it's gonna burn or not. I'll go ahead and... We have got a fire burning. Let me try and set this on fire. Oh, look at it burn. It's burning well. Terrific, that means... We're getting somewhere with this. We're separating some kind of fraction... That might even combust fairly well. It burns very well, actually. Over there... Let's see what comes out from here. That's also something. And there's a lot of it. No. Oh, well. Hey, well, there is a bit in there. Yeah, I think we might have been too hasty. It's all happening way too fast. This pipe seems to be warm. So does this one. But this one's cold. But with the enormous length of the tubes, the water cooling, the water inside the shutter has gotten dark. Which tells us that some of the gases are finding their way into it. But as soon as all of that bubbling and uh, gas release comes to a stop, that'll tell us that the contents of that barrel uh, have decomposed. It will have turned into ash, and we'll be able to crack it open. We'll check to see which tank contains what, and see how much of the crude we were able to extract from just four tires. Okay, now we wait for the process to come to a stop, and then we have a look. See what's up. Right, guys, everything has cooled down. We've cracked open the tank, and here's what we see. It's pretty much ash at this point. The tires have turned into, well, something. But then the metal cord has fully separated. It is separate from the charcoal. Overall, I'd say things have gone pretty well on this end. Okay, now let's look at what we've extracted from the four tires. That is the pyrolysis oil. This is from the number one tank. Since the device had just been made and fired up, there's some weird sediment inside this one. I'm guessing that's like water emulsion. Obviously, while it was getting warm, uh, the moisture was first on the way out, and on top you have the oil itself. Also inside these three bottles next to it. And this tiny portion would be the last one. What's curious is that... This looks more or less pure. Like transparent, albeit there is a tiny bit of sedimentation. But then this was the last to come out. And now we get to the second tank. The second tank... It has also given us... This lovely looking... Pyrolysis oil and look at the quantity. It also has some kind of sediment inside. Anyway, inside the third one where we had the lightest of the fractions, yeah, it looks about right. But in here we have the least amount, like about half a liter. Okay, let's try lighting this stuff on fire now. See whether it'll even burn. Let's start by grabbing... 
I don't know, like that which has come out of the first reservoir, pour a tiny bit in there, and now I'm going to light it on fire. Well, it does burn, and it actually burns pretty well. It caught fire pretty much immediately, and that tells us it is quite flammable. And that is good. We got fire, smoke, just like with ordinary gasoline. Okay, now let's try the stuff that came out of the second separator tank. And this also has caught fire right away and it's burning quite nicely. So yeah, this is some pretty flammable liquid. Very good. Now let's try the substance from number three. Pour a tiny bit into the cap and light it. Oh, terrific. This liquid also burns quite well. So all three of these catch fire, they emit some smoke, and that's pretty terrific. I don't think that'll be quite enough, though. I'd make some more. And so let's distill four more tires and see how much pyrolysis soil that'll give us in total. Let's carry on. This has gone very well indeed. Another four tires have been loaded into the pyrolysis tank, and we were able to make... That's actually more than eight liters, and all because we weren't in that big of a hurry this time. Initially we thought the hotter the better, but that's really not the case. You'd recall how the water buffer... how it was filling up, and that's because things were happening way too fast. But now we decided to take our sweet time, and here is the result. At the end of the day, eight tires yielded a good 15 liters of synthetic crude, of pyrolysis oil. But from the looks of it, I'd be apprehensive about pouring this into my tank. This is, of course, fuel, which is suitable... It'll work well, for example, in heating furnaces, for sort of industrial-grade heaters that don't require fuel be of ideal quality. As for an internal combustion engine inside a car, I honestly don't think this is going to be pure enough. So we'd better purify it then. That'd be done either chemically, but then we'd get dirty beyond washing. Or we can try distilling it again using a similar device. A smaller one that would allow separating carbon and heavy particles from the more volatile vapors that in theory should be suitable for powering an internal combustion engine. So yeah, the idea is to refine this stuff and uh, use it to make a sort of surrogate gasoline. So we'll pick this up again in a future episode. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe. And that's all I got for you. Catch you guys later.